Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. It's Mailbag Monday. Let's start with this one. It says beads and jewelry and tools. Really, beads and jewelry and tools. One of these things might be something I would order. What do we have in here? Jeweler's loop. Magnifying glasses. Okay. Why did I order two? Are they different? Yeah, well, no, by reading that, that's written in Chinese. Oh, come on. Fine, be like that. Oh, it's in a nice little box. Box inside a box. Yeah, that's cleaner. Tool using monkey. Oh, and they're so shiny and glary. That one says 30 times on it, and this one says 20. Can we even see that? Whereas the one that I normally use says 10, and that's why I ordered these guys. Wow. Let's see how they work on some teeny tiny surface mount components, shall we? All right, I got the three of them sitting here, the one that I already had and these two new ones. And the quickest surface mount components I could find are these little 18650 protection boards. So we'll use that. And to keep it fair, I'm going to place that on there in a fixed position. There, focus, and then it will do like I normally do, and try and read things through the lens here. Zoom. Okay, that's as far in as I can zoom with my film and my camera. Okay, and if I tilt that, can we even read it? Not really. What other things are on that board? That thing. Can we tilt it to get a good... Okay, so we can just barely read that. Focus, you. We can't read that guy. Okay, so that's the ten times. Now holding that in the same position. Whoa, look at that. That works nicely. It's very reflective though, isn't it? I guess that's what happens when you got clean lenses. That's definitely readable. What about you? We get in a lot closer anyway. So that was the 20. Let's try the 30. <laughs> Bit of schmoo on the lens, whatever. Oh, wow. Well, that's definitely readable. Okay, so that's at the same distance. Let's try it up here, which is where I normally do these things. That way I can tilt the lenses around and try and avoid... Let's turn it right side up, shall we? Try and avoid the glare. Even at 30 times, I can't read that smallest chip. I can with my naked eye. I can read that. That's the 30. That's the 20. And that's my good old 10. I think that'll be better for looking at uh, stuff. I do have to figure out, though, how not to get all this glare. That's one thing this thing's got going for it. It's got a matte finish handle. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. But they definitely do what the package says. 20 times magnifying and 30 times magnifying. All right. The listing's changed, but here it is. Here's the actual one that I bought. 20 by 21 millimeter jewelry tools. Loop times magnifying glass. Metal folding glass. Magnifier uh, and random letters. Uh, from Enthone-Clothing. Um, the princely sum of a 
buck sixty one American. And the other one, th uh, all the same keywords except for 30 times. Um, also from Antone Clothing, and I paid a buck sixty one for that one as well. Now then, these have changed since I bought them. When I click the link that I bought from, I come to this listing and a similar one for the 20, which now shows it in the located in the USA, does not ship to Canada, and almost eight times as much money. So just caveat emptor. I will still put the link in the description below, like I always do, but um, do your due diligence and search around. You should be able to save money. Alright, next thing on the pile. Um, what does it say? Not much. Oh, there it is there. It says line. They're not even being that creative. They're just putting random names in here, I think. Uh, what's that? That is two charging cables. Okay. So you recall last mailbag, I got a charging cable as well. And I mentioned I was going to be testing a bunch um, of random ones and trying to get some, some good ones to have around here. Because the dollar store ones that I'm using, like that one back there. And this one that the phone's plugged into right now. Are, have a lot of voltage drop on them. So I'm, I've got some connectors on order, um, some female connectors, uh, and I'm going to test a bunch and find some that are good. So I'll add those to the pile of ones I'm going to test later. That's weird. I looked everywhere. I looked on eBay, Bam, Banggood, uh, AliExpress, Amazon. I can't find where I ordered these anywhere. So either the listing's completely evaporated or I'm losing my mind. It's about a 50-50 chance. Anyway, let's get on to the next thing. How about this one? Uh, description of contents, syringe needle. Ooh. Hope I don't get an unexpected visit from law enforcement. Uh... Okay. Oh, okay. These are dispensing tips. I didn't expect it to be syringers with them. These are dispensing tips that are in, that I intend to use for solder paste, which I ordered the day or two days before I got, I ordered this and the solder paste still hasn't showed up yet. Um, but anyway, let's see variety here. There's an assortment of needle gauges. Let me zoom in here and push some of these up here. There's an assortment of, uh, of needle gauges, um, uh, or thicknesses. Um, what are these black ones? They're just dead end caps, I think. Yeah. Um, Two, three, four, five. It looks like there's about six different thicknesses and a whole bunch of them. And some syringes that came with them. So like a typical medical medical syringe, those just screw on there. And I suppose I could use these for sucking up alcohol and flooding stuff or sucking up liquid flux and flooding stuff. But that's not solder paste. Well, it is solder paste. That's uh, silver solder, though, or silver bearing solder. But this isn't the kind that I ordered. This I just actually picked up a long time ago at uh, Princess Auto, and it doesn't work very well. Um, I think the flux is separated from it. But I've got a couple of uh, tubes of it coming from China, so we'll see how this works. All right, here we go. SMD PCB solder paste adhesive glue liquid dispenser plus dispensing needles. 50 pieces total from SS underscore 487. This whole pack cost me $3.32. Ooh, with uh, 37 cents shipping. 
that's unlike me. I guess I couldn't find it anywhere else for cheaper. And just checking my records from when this showed up and when I ordered it, this one took less than 30 days to get here, which is amazing. Which is also why it got here faster than the solder paste that I ordered a couple of days earlier than it. Don't know how that works. The mysteries of ordering from China. Okay, what do we have? An LED module, it says. Hmm, they're not even lying. Well, they might be, but probably not. That's the kind of thing that I would... They are lying, sort of. It's an LCD display, actually. Um, for arduino -y style projects. I've already got uh, one of these smaller ones, which is a two-line by 20 or something. This one's obviously a four-line by something more. Um, have to have to look it up, I guess. But this one, uh, when it came, it was just a bare board. Uh, so you had to uh, at, use, uh, what I think, four data lines and a few other things to pull it. And then later on, I got this I2C backpack for it. This one already came with the I2C backpack already on it. So all I need to do is connect up the SDA, SCL, VCC, and ground. And straighten out the ground pin. Where's my pliers? Straighten out the ground pin. I got a bent in shipping, but that's not a big hairy deal. And I will have a display. Oh. There we go. The part number is 2004, so that's 20 characters by four lines. I'm betting. And this one looks ambery orangey rather than the blue on that one. Yellow green serial I2C IIC TWI 2004 LCD 20 by 4 character LCD module for Arduino. Yip yip yip. I, ah, I got it at auction. For four dollars and ninety cents Canadian, from X E N G A G A X I A N E Y J I twenty sixteen. I'm sure that's pronounceable by somebody who isn't me. Um, okay, let's. What do we have to say about it? LCD. Okay, so that's the that's all the uh, data lines that it's controlling through the I2C, and its built-in address, its preset address is uh, hex two zero. Um, can it be changed? I'm um, just looking quickly. Yeah, there's a, there's three little jumper pads on the back of it, and the fifth thing. This is actually going pretty fast. I may actually pull a sixth thing in here, but the fifth thing um, is called Tool. Ah, one of those. I've been trying to bid on these things for quite a while on eBay, and I finally got successful in getting one at an auction at a price cheap enough to... Uh, not offend my budget. Okay, I'll, peel some. I'll finish peeling that crap off later. So it is a wire strip tool. Hang on, let me zoom in here. So it's got a little wire strip tool for various different gauges of wire. Let me just grab some Cat5 here. And that should Clamp down a little bit and just take the outer jacket. However, if you notice, it's also nicked the inner jacket, so I was a little bit vigorous on there. But with practice, it should work. And the other half of the tool, this little tip here, is a punch down tool for. Crap, it's not the right one for that. What does that punch down onto? I'm thinking it should be 110 type blocks, but this little RG45 jack isn't the right one. 
crap. Well, I, I might have some other um, RG45s that use this size, I hope. Otherwise, I may have just wasted my, my money. Fortunately, I know this was cheap. You see, I told you it was cheap. 45 cents for one piece new wire stripper knife crimper pliers crimping tool cable cutter clip kits from Lolita 8899 Does it say what it what type of block it actually pin and punches? No, not really just the size of it. Oh It is its size is 0 0.0328084 feet. Nice job, guys. Yeah, that was a bit of a disappointment. So let's grab something else from the pile. Here's future mailbags, by the way. There's several. And the stuff gets piled up there in the order in which it arrived. It's a first in, first out buffer. <laughs> So what do we have here? Um, oh. Can you read that? I can't. <laughs> A mystery inside an enigma. This is great. A scope probe oh that's grand because this thing came with just a pair of clip leads but now I have a real probe to attach to it oh that's great okay um let's connect it up and what do I need to power this thing I need nine volts okay hang on here so there we go with the probe clipped onto the test port of the uh, of the scope. That is nice. And let me just turn the lights back on now. She dries. Okay, so that's just a nicer form factor than uh, than using these big things. So even the negative clip, the ground clip, is more compact. That's great. And of course the probe, you can get right into a circuit. He said pulling out a random circuit. And just get onto a pin without worrying as much about shorting onto something else. That's great. Feels nice and solid. It's got a one times and ten times. I'm just going to plug back into the little clip that comes with it. So right now, can you even see that? Not really. Right now it's in one times mode. And ten times mode, yep, flattens it right down. That's nice. So, this thing has a maximum one volt input sen sensitivity. So one volt per per division, um, and which would mean there's a 10 squares, so maximum 10 volts, which makes sense. But this, I can put it into 10 times mode if I'm going, if I think my signal's above that, just to protect it. And I've got some isolation, uh, well, not really isolation, I guess. I've got some protection, which is great. And like all good scope probes, it has a little uh, adjustable capacitor in there so you can adjust the uh, linearity of the square wave which is the whole point of that test point there that's great my cheap test equipment uh, selection is is coming along quite nicely and finally high quality p6100 oscilloscope probe dc to 6 megahertz or dc to 100 megahertz depending on which part of the headline you want to believe. Scope Clip Probe FC. Uh, $5.58, which is, of course, the least expensive one I could find. 
from Fashion Dash Fat. Uh, oh, with 50 cents shipping. Okay. Is there anything else in the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Um, I suppose I could have got two pieces for 13.74. Yeah, that's still more than I paid. Is there anything down here about it? Again, two different... Oh, I guess maybe is the bandwidth change with the attenuation? I don't know. Um, input resistance 1 meg uh, when it's on 1 times and 10 meg when it's on 100 times. Capacitance again. Okay. And it has the compensation, which is uh, 10 to 30 picofarad variable capacitor. Working voltage on 1 times it says up to 200 volts and on 10 times it says up to 600 volts. Clearly with my little scope I'm not going to go anywhere near either of those temperature whatever why would it have a temperature it claims to be 120 centimeters long 1.2 meters um, just stretching it out between my arms yeah it looks like about that cool all right another overall successful mail bag got some usb leads to test scope probe is going to come in handy this thing was a dud but it was the cheapest thing I've got ever from China uh, so I'm not too stressed about it um, these little magnifying glasses are going to come in handy I think the 20 times is going to be the handiest one the 30 for looking at or it's almost too zoomy for what I'm using it for but you never know when you're going to get have to get in really close a screen or a, an LCD uh, uh, four lines by 20 characters that is uh, going to go into general stock with my other assorted uh, displays and once the solder paste gets here i'll be able to play with those success once again thanks for watching um the guys that are on patreon thank you so much for your support uh your support helps put stuff into these mailbags in the first place um and yeah Thank you for watching once again. I'll be back uh, hopefully on Friday with another of my regularly scheduled random videos. And on two weeks from now, I will be back with another Mailbag Monday.